many thanks for staying with us. Nigeria has reached out to the United States government for help in the repatriation of proceeds of crime and corruption. The vice president today asked a U.S. congressional delegate that visited him at the presidential villa Abuja to assist the country in its fight to stop the menace. Professor Yemi Oshimbajo explains that government is doing everything possible to ensure that corrupt officials don't get a safe haven abroad. He says, and I quote, the, pres the, the Buhari presidency's strategy, which is one of the most effective ways of fighting corruption, is ensuring that these proceeds are unsafe and for people to know that they would be found out and they would be punished for it and they would, we would seize whatever profit they had to gain, end of quote. He told the delegation that the present administration regards corruption as a threat that must be dealt with at its root. It was a busy day for the U.S. congressmen as they also visited the Senate president, Dr. Bukola Saraki, and expressed a firm commitment by their government to sell arms to Nigeria. The sale of arms and the humanitarian crisis in the Northeast were some of the issues discussed at the meeting between the Senate president and the delegation from the U.S. Congress, which is led by Senator Christopher Corns. Dr. Bukola Saraki told journalists after the closed-door meeting that Nigeria needs to address the human rights issues by the military, as it was a major concern raised by the U.S. government. The new development has happened, and for the first time now, the U.S. government have, um, in principle, agreed to, uh, to, to, to sell arms in those areas. And we have also assured that we'll look into areas of human rights. It's always been their concern, so that, that we can strengthen that relation. And if, if that happens, which we're hopeful following this visit, it should now become a reality to be a new chapter that we're opening where the, the U.S. government will now be ready to, to, to sell arms to Nigeria. And that will help us strengthen our men and women in, in their fight against terrorism, in surveillance, in intelligence, and this kind of area. The commitment they've made today, is which, which we feel we've taken away, is that the fight against terrorism is an issue that's not just should be left to Nigeria. And if it needs all stepping up on the type of arms that they sell, then they will do that. Then we must play our own roles to an area of human rights. The Senate President, Dr. Bukola Saraki, and will be telling us about the several interventions made by the Central Bank of Nigeria on business needs. You first. First Bank. Thanks a lot, Melinda, and welcome to Business News. Once again, the Central Bank of Nigeria has intervened at the foreign exchange market with injection of $250 million. The breakdown shows that the Apex Bank sold $100 million and uplifted the small and medium enterprises with $85 million and the invisible segment with $65 million. So far, the CBN has injected $9.96 billion into the forex market since it commenced an aggressive intervention in February this year. CBN spokesman Mr. Kurafo says the CBN will pump even more in the coming days to enhance stability in the forex market. Owando, Nigeria has issued a statement that the petitions filed against the company with the Securities and Exchange Commission have no merit. Well, according to the company, Ansbury Incorporated is not a shareholder of Owando. It says one Dahiru Mangal indicated in a petition that it holds 17.9% interest in Owando. But based on the company's register, he only owns 4% of Owando shares. But he is yet to disclose his beneficial ownership of 13.9% in line with Section 95 of the company's law. Owando is listed on both the Nigeria and Johannesburg stock exchanges and it says it will provide full disclosure of the outcome of the ongoing inquiry as soon as investigations are over. Heavy price losses from key market bellwether stocks pushed the local equities market to a negative start today in the final trading week of August. Here's BC Adebayo with the details. Hello and welcome to the Stock Market Report. The last trading week of August at the NSC begins Monday with another round of profit taking, knocking off about 114 billion naira from Friday's soft landing. 
The sell-off was mostly reflected on sectoral activity charts in banking, consumer goods and industrial stocks. The all share index fell by nearly 1%, but still around the 36,000 level. The profit taking was dominated by 30 losers, including Dangote Cement, but led by 5% of clients built by Double One and Trans Nationwide Express. Total, on the other hand, was top on the top of nine gainers with a 9% price increase. Investors' appetite for stocks remained impressive, especially in the shares of Custodian which contributed 190.5 million shares to an overall of 348.11 million units traded today. And that's it on the Stock Market Report. I am BC Adibayo. Well, Hurricane Harvey is still affecting global world markets today as they ended a session with mixed sentiments. Let's now see a snapshot of the closing figures today. Thanks for watching Business News tonight. I'm Anne Mwawadu. The rest of the news at 10 continues now with Melinda. You first. First Bank. Many thanks, Anne. Residents of a community in Efremu Delta State are asking the Nigerian army to return the piece of land allegedly seized from them for the construction of a defense academy. The traditional ruler claims that the land was given to the army about 40 years ago, but accused them of converting it for other purposes not beneficial to the community. Disgruntled residents of Uwe community in Delta Central stormed the streets of Eforo, protesting what they call the illegal acquisition and sales of their land, allegedly by the Nigerian army. Carrying placards with various inscriptions, the protesters obstructed traffic on the popular Efron roundabout, calling on government to intervene and release the over 185.20 hectares of land back to them. They are hungry. They have no place to farm. Our soldier acquired the, uh, acquired our land, just selling it for themselves. A land that was meant for public purpose, they are converting it to private purpose. My God, how can you do such a thing? It's not, it's, it's not obtainable anywhere. If we win a god then, first to first fire, come up firewood, I'm in the pursuers. Even to, to touch a pond, our pond where we dig, when our grandfather dig, the, to touch them, I'm in the pursuers. From the streets, they march to the palace of the traditional ruler to register their displeasure. Then the traditional ruler confirmed that several attempts have been made to reach the presidency and the army on the matter. We approached them. No pressure. Two years ago, they marked even the villages to be demolished, which were not part of the land given to them. Illegally, they extended without our knowledge, without the community knowledge. As at the time of this report, efforts to reach the commanding officer of the F-103 battalion was without success. However, the public relations officer of the Benin command told our correspondent in a telephone conversation that the army acquired that land following due process.
From Delta, let's move to Oshun State now, where medical doctors are threatening to withdraw their services if the state government does not address the issues which they term as decadence in the health sector. The state chairman of the Nigeria Medical Association, Mr. Tokumbo Olajumoke, explains that despite several protests and appeals, the government has remained adamant. But the special advisor to the Oshun State Government on Health Matters assured them that the government will do everything it can to resolve the matter. Oshun State, as we have it, is the only state that has continued to pay our doctors a fraction of their salaries and deduct full Peter, which is the tax, while paying fraction salaries with issuance of non-complementary pay slips. Despite these harsh and unfavorable conditions, the state doctors have continued to render health care services to the people of Oshun State. The session following are two years of appeals, engagement and discussions with the state government on the decadence in the health sector of our dear state, hereby gives a 21 days ultimatum starting from today, Monday, August 28, and to lapse on September 17, 2017, to resolve the aforementioned recalcitrant injustice method to us. At the expiration of this ultimatum, we will be left with no other option than to immediately withdraw our services to the states. I don't even thank them for giving this time. So it's a time for us to actually meet and deliberate whatever it is. Um, we see the round table is very important. We are going to meet on this round table and resolve and see where we can find a middle ground. We wouldn't want them to shut the health system now. Um, they have, it's essential to productivity that we recognize and we'll do everything in our power to ensure that we engage them in the, in the shortest time. Still ahead on the news at 10, President Mohamed Buhari congratulates Nigeria's female national basketball team on their Afro-Basket title victory. That's in a moment. Join us again.